Okay, um, we're going to work on long division of polynomial. We're just going to quickly divide this value into this rather long polynomial. Now they have a value for each of the exponents, right? And this you could say is x to the power of 0. So we go 3, 2, 1, 0. So we don't actually have to add any values in. Whenever we set up long division or synthetic division, we have to make sure we have uh, a coefficient for each of the variables that are uh, that should be represented. And that's, you know that? Okay, that? okay good. So we're going to set that up. It's, like you said, you know it already. Plus 18. Plus 8. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay. So we go to set up the long division, which is very similar. It's very similar to when we're working on division of just... Uh, normal numbers. When we're trying to eliminate, we look at our variable, and we're looking for a variable that will eliminate the first number in our process. So if we have x to the power of 1 and we need to eliminate x cubed, what value do we have to multiply by that when we subtract there will be nothing left in this column? x squared? That's right. Okay. So we need to multiply this by x squared, and actually we'll put it in red here, x squared. So we multiply x squared times x plus 2. That's going to give us x cubed plus 2x squared. We go to subtract. These will cancel out, so we're left with 0. When we subtract these, we get 5x squared. Then we have to do the exact same idea. What value do we have to now multiply this by again to eliminate our 5x squared? 5x? Uh, That's right. We'd have to multiply so that this term would become 5x squared. We'll have to multiply by 5x. So when we multiply that, we'll get 5x squared plus 10x. And sorry, I should have brought this right down. Plus 10x. When we go to subtract, these cancel, we have 0. And when we subtract these values, we have 4x. Okay? 4x plus 8. Same idea, we need to eliminate yep. for the 4x. What do we multiply by? 4. Just the value of 4. So we do that, we get 4x, and it turns out plus 8 is 0. Very simple idea. So let's say we had an unknown value in here, like we were trying to solve for this. And this is where we're going to pause and work backwards through it. So we just went through the long division. Let's say we were to work backwards through this. Um, they've given us a question like this, and they've told us that the remainder in this question is a value of 7. Okay. So instead of starting at the very beginning, that's actually the value that's unknown to us. So we're going to work from the end because we know what the end value is. It happens to be a value of 7. So with our long division, if you recall, the last value we subtracted was our constant, right? Our value of 3 here. And we're always subtracting in this case. Uh, in this case, it was the number 7 we got as a remainder. So we're looking for a blank value. Okay. Essentially, what... 3 subtract what gives us 7. So the idea of 3 subtract what value gives us 7. And we can constantly set them up as uh, small linear functions. Okay, well to solve for x, we bring 3 over, we get negative x is equal to uh, 4, and then we give us x is equal to negative 4. So the number we're looking for is negative 4. To create this negative 4, okay, that negative 4 has to have come from this value here. So we know that we multiplied that value by negative 4 to create this negative 4. And whatever we did to this value, we did to this value. Oops. So what that means is we now have negative 4x minus 4, which means we multiplied this by the value of negative 4. If we did that, the reason we did that, remember with our division, is because we were canceling out these values, whatever this came down to. Okay. So if we were using this value to cancel out, essentially get a 0, that means this must have been a negative 4x when it was down here also. Okay. So when this was down here, it should have been negative 4x, okay? and the plus 3 should have came down. So we know that would have happened. Okay. Um, from that negative 4x, to make this negative 4x, So that idea, and this is a tough way to look at it, we must have subtracted something, right? So when we subtracted this, the idea here is what 
in this case, gives us our negative 2. What did we subtract our negative 2x by to get negative 4x? So same idea, we can make another small linear equation, right? We subtracted our negative 2x to get negative 4x. So mm -hmm. negative 2x subtracts some value, uh, we'll call it y in this case, is equal to negative 4x. So what does y equal? We bring this negative 2 over, we get negative y is equal to negative 2x, which is y is equal to 2x, right? Negative 2x minus 2x. So exact same idea as we did before. That means this value here must have been negative 2x, okay? Well, same idea. Shouldn't it just be 2x? Oh, sorry, yes, you're right. Positive 2x. Is that what we got down here? Yeah, we did get positive 2x. Okay, good. Um, with that being said, what did we multiply to make our constant again 2x? 1 times what would give us 2x? 2x. Exactly, 2x. So we work backwards again. We get positive 2x, okay? Well, with that being said, let's multiply that all through. That means this first term would have been positive 2x also. So we had positive 2x. 2x squared? Squared, excellent. Uh, positive 2x squared, which means we eliminated this value by creating a positive that means this must have been 2x squared, okay? So then we work backwards again from here. And again, we probably need a little more room, but we'll continue with it. We have our 5x squared. 5x squared plus what value gave us our 2x squared? We can set the exact same thing up. I'll do it in purple this time. 5x squared plus y equals 2x squared. And it's not plus y, it's y. subtract y. Good. I'm glad you're picking up on it faster than that. Good. So negative y, which gives us negative 3x squared, y is equal to positive 3x squared. So what that means is this was set up as positive 3x squared, okay? And we subtracted that value, which means if we multiplied by positive 3x squared here, that means our value over here must have been 3x cubed, which means our k value should have been the value of 3, which is exactly what you found in your version. So my way of doing it was far more convoluted than yours, but we essentially worked backwards. It's another method to solve it. I liked your method, though. It was very quick and efficient. I think. I okay, with that same idea, if we want to solve k in this question, um, we can go about this in a very simple way. Now, our p at x, we know the factor we're using here. And to find the factor, we would essentially set this equal to 0. The factor in this case is x is equal to number one, negative 1. So with our remainder theorem, what that's saying is p at negative 1 is essentially equal to the value of 7. So if that's true, we're going to take our function notation down here. Okay, And p at negative 1. And remember that we can replace this p at negative 1 with a value of 7 after. We're going to plug negative 1 into all these values. So we have k times negative 1 cubed plus 5 times negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 3. Okay. So with that being the case, I'm now going to replace 7 with a p minus 1 because we know we have a remainder of 7 in this question. So 7 is equal to k. When we cube this, we get negative 1. This becomes 5 times 1. This becomes positive 2 plus 3. And now that we've done that, our goal is essentially to isolate k, which is much simpler than reversing long division or reversing synthetic division to solve for our k factor. So when we do this, this becomes negative k. We move all our other factors to the other side. They become 7 minus 5 minus 2 uh, minus 3, it looks like. I feel like I've done that wrong. 7 Negative. Oh, no, that's right. Okay, good. I was a little concerned here. 7 minus 5 is 2. Minus 2 is 0. Minus 3 is negative 3. So we have negative 3 is equal to negative k. And to get rid of the negative, we divide both sides by negative 1. We get k is equal to a value of 3, which is exactly what we found in our previous question. So instead of reversing synthetic or long division, we can plug our value in, set it equal to our remainder, and isolate our unknown coefficient.